fabulous thanks to all the experts that have been with us today. It has been uh, an immense privilege to listen to you. It has been an extraordinarily rich and enriching dialogue. I think all of us, member states, uh, various regional and uh, intergovernmental organizations of the Summits Process Civil Society in the region on behalf of the Summit Secretariat of the Americas and on behalf of the OAS itself. I cannot tell you how deeply satisfied we are with this policy dialogue and we are very, very thankful to the IACHR and the Foundation on Due Process for uh, being uh, with us and in shepherding us through this immensely important uh, debate. The participation of Mr. Luis Almauro, the Secretary General of the OAS, and I, who have the honor of presenting here, together with uh, the Summit Secretary Kevin O'Reilly, uh, representative of the OAS uh, to the summit, and the leadership in this country, which is doing so much to prepare for that summit, this country, I mean the OAS for, of the United States, congratulations. And so thank you on uh, uh, my behalf to all of you, because it means that the Secretary General and others have been able to hear the viewpoints mentioned here, which do pick up on a lot that has been said in summits meetings and in the permanent council and various of the policy commissions, uh, but all of it enriches and heightens the importance of each one of these sources and thoughts. Thank you for the strengthening of democracy, James Lambert. Thank you for your confidence. Thank you for your participation here. And most especially, let me say to you, Katya Salazar, how pleased we are and how fortunate we are that you were guiding these various panels and uh, ensuring that this exchange would be even more enriching. They have allowed us, I believe, to understand better, we at the Summit Secretariat, how critical it is that the audience uh, that is conformed by the states, by the organizations, that entire uh, workings of the OAS is, is critical. And the summits last Saturday, as we know, two decades have passed since the uh, charter was subscribed, pointing out what has been done, what needs to continue to be done. And in the present context, as all of you have underscored, it is ever more necessary, not less so, but more necessary to be aware of the new challenges that democracies in the region must recognize as uh, authoritarian and populist uh, regimes take root and which always aim to erode human rights, particularly at a time when uh, health is a great concern. And that's precisely why we thought that this would be a very appropriate time to hold this meeting. That is an exchange on the state of democracy, riding on the session that was held in May. And uh, uh, taking advantage of this important anniversary, but also uh, with a view to the next summit. So from all of the comments that have been made and uh, you can relax. I'm certainly not going to attempt to summarize. We've got this on tape, and uh, we have, by that recording, a means to delve very deeply into the crux of what you all have said. Simply let me say that the approval of the Inter-American Democratic Charter was considered and remains a priority for the defense of democracy in the region. Twenty years later, maybe in a different form, in more sophisticated modes and guises, as Katya has pointed out, we still need to show innovation, to show moxie, to have the courage to think out of the box and to use the mechanisms that already exist in the inter-American system more wisely, more effectively, whether it's accompanying missions or launching diplomatic uh, uh, initiatives 
to check into how the uh, charter is doing, as Pisa was saying, or drawing up a working program, as Trevor mentioned, coming up with instruments, practical instruments that can make a difference in how the Inter-American Democratic Charter is being implemented and not least how civil society sees it being useful. So these recommendations can go quite far. Let me also say that throughout this exchange, what has also been palpable, alas, is how democracy has been eroding. And in the face of that daunting challenge, it is agreed here that it has to be the whole of society that is roped in, as Marie Claire pointed out, based on the Charter and its principles, the principles that need to be better understood by the citizenry, not forgetting that the most important measures that can lead to better defense of the rule of law rest, after all, on the shoulders of the citizenry. For good or ill, it's the citizens that are going to see it through. Without it, we cannot, without compliance with the Democratic Charter, we can't move forward. Uh, Commissioner Hernandez says there has to be a pro approach to strengthen the independence of, of branches of government and, and to put an end to stigmatizing uh, justice operators. Now, as to judicial independence, this is a fundamental element in all uh, countries that operate under rule of law, and it's pending throughout the region, and independently of reforms that uh, that have taken place, there's uh, evidence that the judiciary has been co-opted, and the main actors of the justice systems are in the pockets of the executive branch, and we have to counter this situation. Also, building and strengthening a democracy has been raised by uh, the commissioner about there must be uh, independent judiciaries as well as as help to states with the process of, ju of ju uh, judge selection, the judge's selection process. And so we also underscore the topic of effective diplomacy and the willingness of states to be able to engage in such efforts and identify the debts as has been pending debts, pending business and urgent issues such as democratic deterioration as, as Santiago pointed out, these must be dealt with. And Mr. Pisa. And so what can we do to ensure Garen, uh, democracy vis-a-vis -vis urgent situations? And I just can mention a few things that you brought up, which, such as the need to forcefully act to defend the Inter-American Democratic Charter and the proposal to th rethink this, uh, uh, at the creation of a tool to enforce the Democratic Charter and the need to promote the awareness of the Democratic Charter, in addition to that, to work in education and cooperation assistance, this is absolutely key in this effort. Also, uh, I mentioned the importance to distinguish between states that have democratic uh, willingness and those that don't, and that have a, a, and a different tools that would make this uh, effort to be effective and that raise awareness about human rights in the throughout the continents, the hem hemisphere, which is what the Commission does, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. But currently, it's a challenge, and we have to be prepared for this because it limits the possibility, the scope of action of the political uh, organs of the OAS. And this involves generally working in the area, as I said, uh, education, promotion, and cooperation. Now, to wrap up, the Democratic Charter 
is a political and legal be- uh, reference document. It's our roadmap, which which lays out the necessary elements that are required. But it is the states that have to take the decisions with regard to uh, f- threats to the institutional framework in each country. And so these issues can only be can can not only be solved with a with a that they can be solved by the role played by the different political sectors within each country but we and we can't attribute to the to the charter democratic regression or any anti-democratic efforts of these of these uh, states and and this has been happening throughout but we need to take a strategic position with different strategic partners in innovative ways and including diplomatic efforts and then there's been a special focus on efforts to promote a democratic culture in the different countries of the hemisphere in view of the fact and this I pulled out of one of the pre- presentations from Marie Claire on another occasion, taking democracy and human rights as universal values. As the Secretary General mentioned, there's been a lot of efforts by the OAS to engage in actions to strengthen and pro- uh, the, the, ch- the, ch- the charter, to strike a balance and safeguard democracy and as an example, we have defense of freedom of the press, freedom of expression, the promotion of transparency and probity in public administration, gender parity in, in elections, and different and the disp- and the display of the electoral observation deployment of these missions, electoral observation missions. But it's very clear that there's been an open effort to try to strengthen democracy, and this is a pending uh, uh, item on our agenda and the agenda of the OAS, and we will get back to it and continue to deal with it. So we, it's been, it's, this has been very interesting, not only to the OAS, but in general, in the context of the summits process. We know our hemisphere is on high alert as has been mentioned by the Secretary General, with regard to sustainability and uh, democratic gains. And so it's fundamental to continue to figure out different ways to translate this into a common effort and to continue to listen to those who have been working on behalf of strengthening democratic governance throughout the region. And to pre- preserve this balance of power and safeguard democracy. In this regard, the ninth summit will become a very appropriate s- setting to move forward in this area. Despite different ideological differences of different states, this will not be an easy debate, but it's necessary in the spirit at first to m- maintain a defense of democracy and I wrap up with that I don't would not before thanking each and every one of you from the uh, summit secretariats of the OAS and we hope to be able to have your contributions on another opportunity thank you very much thank you Maria Salini uh, thank you